Hello. So here we're at video number five dedicated to astrology and we're going to continue our exploration of the Amelibi sphere, this uh, tool, basic tool to understand the movements of the sky and the astrology known as tropical astrology. So today we're going to discover after having looked at the celestial equator, tropics of Capricorn and Cancer, we're going to discover the zodiac a little more. And these big circles of the sphere that are the celestial meridians and that are absolutely essential in tropical astrology. So first of all, let's focus on the zodiac. So astrologers and astronomers of the antiquity, and when they observed the sky, they saw that there were uh, stars that they called um, uh, moving stars, wandering stars. In fact, that is the etymology of the word planet. Uh, it means a moving star, a wandering star. And so they observed that, and they also observed the fact that these wandering stars, these planets, just like the sun in fact, moved within a narrow band of the celestial sphere, a band of roughly 17 degrees, and that they called the zodiac. So I'd like to specify that on this sphere the zodiac should be slightly a broader, a quarter in fact, um, wider. And the tropics of Cancer and Capricorn should be much closer to the celestial equator. And you see the whole point of this sphere is that the zodiac being smaller and the meridians further apart from the equator, it enables us to have a clearer vision. So it's not a scientific object, but it is a good educational tool because you can distinguish um, yes, the various aspects really well. That's something I wanted to specify. So this movement of all the um, stars on this narrow band of the celestial sphere it is pretty mysterious. Um, why do all the stars travel on this 17 um, degree uh, band? It's a mystery of the creation of our solar system and a mystery that physicists explain through the uh, through creation when gas and dust were moving around a proto uh, sun and then little by little um, this system stabilized thanks to various physical forces so the system stabilized and gas and dust would gather together in this narrow band so when the system the solar system was created it was materialized you know by gas and dust that then agglomerated and formed planets but today of course the zodiac is totally immaterial um, it is just a journey that the planets uh, uh, travel along uh, but totally immaterial so that is something that's important so what I need to specify also it's a very important detail although it's not visible here is that in the middle of the zodiac is a band known as the ecliptic which is the apparent uh, path of the Sun so imagine a little line here that crosses the zodiac in the middle and that's the apparent path of the Sun uh, known as the ecliptic um, so also a very important circle uh, in the celestial sphere. So what is compelling when you look at the Amalui sphere is the strange inclination of the zodiac. You see, it's a rather strange dance, you know, uh, around the, uh, the Earth. So this zodiac is inclined. Um, if you think of, uh, you know, the celestial equator here, um, there is an angle between the two of 23.26 degrees, the same angle again. Um, and so this angle, this inclination of the zodiac compared to the celestial equator is responsible for seasons. So I'll explain this in a few words. When the sun enters the, um, sorry, in summer, the beginning of summer, I'm going to place my sun here. The sun enters uh, the sign of cancer. So that's the beginning of summer. And you can see compared to our little um, uh, figurine here, um, you know, if you look at it's at the vertical, so the rays of the sun are very hot. Um, there's no loss of energy at all. Whereas if you place yourself um, at the beginning of winter in the sign of Capricorn, so Sun in Capricorn, you can see that compared to our little figurine here, our little character, that the rays are going to be oblique. 
you know, so the uh, rays of the sun will hit him in a very oblique manner, and so the energy will be scattered. The more oblique the rays, the more the energy is scattered, so the heat that reaches the earth is far less. Um, so this inclination of the zodiac is going to determine uh, the seasons. Um, it, it's sometimes been believed that it's the proximity um, of the sun and the earth and that is the cause of seasons, but of course nothing is further from the truth. Uh, in actual fact, it's interesting to know that uh, the sun and the earth are at their closest in uh, the middle of winter. In 2016, it was the 2nd of January. So, you know, totally unrelated, the proximity of the earth and the sun, but everything to do with the inclination um, of the zodiac. That's what determines seasons. So, based on this zodiac, we're going to look at four key points on the Amelie sphere. Um, points that everybody has heard of, i.e. Um, the summer and winter solstices and spring and autumn uh, equinoxes. So, uh, summer solstice to start with. It's when the sun um, enters the sign of Cancer, and more precisely, the summer solstice is the intersection between the Tropic of Cancer and the ecliptic. So this is how we define the summer solstice. Obviously here this is an educational tool and it's not accurate because the zodiac should be, it should be the middle of the zodiac that should be uh, on the um, Tropic of Cancer. But as I was saying, it's interesting, you know, um, but not uh, accurate. Um, so intersection of the Tropic of Cancer and of the zodiac to simplify matters uh, gives us our uh, summer solstice. Winter solstice, here if we go to the southern hemisphere, our sun is at the beginning of the sign of Capricorn, and so the intersection of the ecliptic or the zodiac, to keep things simple, and the Tropic of Capricorn um, give us our winter solstice. That's the second point, and a very important point, very well known and very important in tropical astrology, is the spring equinox, where the sun arrives in uh, Aries, and here um, you can see the, it's the intersection of the ecliptic, the zodiac, and um, the equator, the celestial equator. So it's a transition when the sun goes from the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere. And this is where you have the spring equinox. And, and on the other side, you have the opposite, i.e. the autumn equinox, um, when the sun goes into uh, Libra and goes from the northern to the southern hemisphere. So the intersection between the ecliptic and the celestial equator. So now we have defined four essential points, the two solstices and the equinoxes. This is going to enable us to define these uh, major circles here, the celestial meridians. And um, so here we have, you know, um, the autumn equinox, and on the other side, uh, the spring equinox. And so this big circle here that crosses the two equinoxes and the poles of the sphere is um, simply the equinox um, circle before in, an, in antiquity and up until the Middle Ages. Um, it was known as Collier, the Collier, you know, Equinox uh, Collier. It's a major circle that goes through these points and by the poles of the sphere. And then the other big circle that crosses the points, the solstices and the poles of the sphere is the solstice circle or um, solstice collier. Um, so we've defined all the circles of the sphere. And this is going to enable us to see that there are four quadrants on this sphere, the four quadrants of the seasons. The first quadrant uh, is the spring one. 
defined here by all these circles in the sphere, second quadrant here, the summer quadrant, here the autumn quadrant, and finally the winter quadrant. So all this um, our middle sphere is known to you now, the various circles, the quadrants. Um, we can really start talking about astrology in the next video. I'd just like to say something, a very important thing, is that here, the beginning of, um, oh, sorry, the spring equinox defines the beginning of the sign of Aries, and it's known as point zero um, on this circle, that is at 360 degrees, at the spring equinox, beginning of Aries um, is the beginning, it's point zero. Virgo, or sorry, Libra, the beginning of Libra on the opposite side, 180 degrees. Um, so that's how, um, by using the zodiac, you start with uh, Aries um, and degree zero. So now that you know everything, uh, you know, it will help us understand tropical astrology. So let's meet in uh, our next video where we're going to look at tropical astrology and um, the signs of the zodiac. So thank you very much and see you very shortly. Bye bye.